There are not a lot of managers. Um, there are more agents. Um, unfortunately, in the industry, managers are often looked down upon. I don't know why, because I think that they, they're, they're another tool to getting into doors for actors. But um, basically, the agents are more well-received than managers, and there are very few managers on, on the East Coast, um, not like an, out in L.A. where there are a lot of managers. Um, I like to work with everybody. And um, again, it, as unorthodox as it may be, I'm one of the agents that don't believe that other agents are competition. Because I believe when you have talent that you represent and your goal is supposed to be to represent them and to do all you can for them, when I hear of another opportunity somewhere with another agent, um, I'll contact that agent and say, by the way, I heard you're looking for this need. I have this need. I have this person um, that can fill this need for you. You know, Would you like to, to, to book them? At first, in the beginning, if they don't know me, they'll say, well, what's in it for you? And I go, well, it's not a matter of what's in it for me. I'm not looking for anything for myself. I'm looking to get the talent a job, a paying job, and I'm looking to help you in the industry make a commission. Because if we all work together, then we can all make a lot of money together and we can all be successful for our talent. Um, as the agents get to know me, now they know me, the ones that constantly either call me or I call them, and they know when I'm calling them for a, a lead on a project. Um, but I believe that if, if we all work together, um, it's always it works out for the talent because they're the winners, and I don't believe in agents fighting over talent and saying, well, he's mine, you can't have him, and I'm going to get the commission on this. Um, I think that's one of the big problems in this industry because everybody feels they're in competition with one another, and I believe if we all work together, um, everybody wins. Number one, be current. <laughs> if you have long hair and your headshot has long hair and you get a haircut, please don't show up on an audition with cut hair and a long hair um, a res a headshot with long hair on it. Um, that's one of the biggest problems casting directors have because if you don't look like your headshot, the headshot is what they see first. Now, yes, you can say, well, it might be better because if, if you look better than your headshot, but if you don't look like your headshot, um, it shows that you're not a professional. It shows that your agent's not professional. So that's really, really important. Um, a resume that's up to date. Um, I know a lot of actors seem to put resumes on the back of their headshots, which I don't really agree with because that kind of says, well, you got to use up these headshots because it's printed on the back of them. And if you've gotten two lead roles in the past week, what are you going to do unless you print it up again? So I always suggest, you know, printing them up as you need them so you can keep them up to date and attaching them to the headshot. Um, also, something that's very important is an accurate and grammatically correct resume. Um, it's a big thing in LA for some reason I find from all the resumes I see people don't know how to spell principal and I've actually been in casting sessions where a casting director would throw a headshot in the trash and I'd say wow they did a really good job because yeah they did but if they can't spell what they are I don't want them on my production and it's sad to say but some people really take that seriously um, also formats I must have looked at 40 resumes at ActorFest um, this past week and I was surprised that of the 40, there were maybe 10 where the columns were in line, everything was spelled properly, directors' names were spelled properly. The rest of them, there were a lot of misspelled words. And, you know, your resume is a reflection of you, the actor. And when you go into an interview, you can do a great performance and have a great smile on your face and have a great headshot. But if you flip over the resume and there's all these typos and you've got spacing all over and it's not tapped properly, and then the director that you just work with, who everyone knows, has his name misspelled, um, it just doesn't, it doesn't look well and it taints you as an, as an actor and it looks like you're not professional and you're not really right on your game and doing what you're supposed to do. Another thing is don't lie on your resume. Um, if you're not proficient in dialects, don't put that you speak five of them because of the fact once in a while you will, be, you will once in a while you will be called on it and a casting director will say, oh, you do a French. Uh, please do it for me. And if you're not right on the mark and you do a proficient French, ac French accent, then they're going to look at you as though you lied. And then sometimes they look at the agent as, you know, you got your talent, they're lying on their resume. And then you may not get the role or they may just look at you and say, well, thank you for coming. And that's the end of that. So it's important to be truthful. And, you know, when you're proficient, it's better that you have one accent on there that you do really well than to list five that you don't do well and it's going to show you as unprofessional. And also training is super important on your resume. Um, a lot of people have a lot of workshops they go to and they don't put it on their resume because they're busy listing commercials and print work, which you never do on an acting resume. But... Um, People will, will look at that and say, oh, nice resume, but they haven't had much training. And if you've had the training, you need to put it on there because it's super important. And if you have uh, no training or not a lot of it, then you need to go out and get it because that's what's going to get you in front of casting directors. It's going to get you booked for the job. Well, um, some choose Craigslist, which I don't really... Uh, 
advertised using because a lot, of, a lot of times they're Craigslist posts that are not accurate and not valid. Um, sometimes they go to websites such as the Southern Casting Call, um, and they're different, Mandy.com, different sites such as that. Um, there's a lot of controversy about do you need an agent for extras? And um, I book extras um, on occasion because of the fact a lot of times the talent would rather me do the work than them have to go look for it and have to find out the information. I know casting directors prefer when I book the, the extra work because they don't have to deal with the talent. They don't have to deal with numerous emails asking all kinds of questions. And because they know when they have talent submitted by me that the talent's going to show up professional. They're going to show up with wardrobe, more than one selection. They're going to show up on time. And they're going to be committed to the project and not say after the second day, oh, I can't work the third day. I thought I told you that. Um, so the industry people like agents to work with um, actors on that. But sometimes... Um, Actors feel, well, I don't want to pay a commission or I don't want to, you know, uh, I don't want my t my agent to know I'm doing extra work. So they decide to go about it doing them themselves. And, you know, I disagree with that because I feel you should be honest with your agent and let them know what you're doing because it's a very small world and nothing's worse than to submit yourself for something that your agent has submitted for. And then the agent gets called and said, oh, your talent already submitted for this role. Um, it makes the talent and the agent look bad. And then when you're booking yourself for extra work, a lot of times you can book yourself for extra work and the shoot may be canceled or things happen and they're not going to post on Craigslist. They're not going to post on some of the websites that the shoot was canceled. So if you do it through your agent, at least the agent will always be contacted and they can give you the information so you don't drive a long way for nothing or so that you don't take off from work for something that doesn't take place.